Hello people, it's me, Ginny Metherall, back again with another video. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a fourth generation witch and I have a channel which helps people advance upon their own path in witchcraft. Many of my subscribers have asked me to give them greater and more in-depth knowledge and it occurred to me that we can't do this without you realising more about yourself. And the best way to know as much about yourself as possible is to ask someone who knows you very well. And the person who knows you the best is probably your spirit guide. And so today's video is all about your spirit guide, what they are and how to contact them. We need to know what exactly is a spirit guide. Now, every single person in this world, without exception, has one. Literally everyone. There is somebody out there in the world of spirit who is exclusively looking after you and your best interests. Your spirit guide is a human spirit who has lived on this earth maybe more than once and passed over, back into the world of spirit, maybe come back. I don't know depends upon the person they're looking after. And you will have a spirit guide from about the age of six months old. When you are first born, your aura is so intertwined with that of your mother, you haven't completely separated from her. And it takes you about six months to separate yourself off into a separate being who's ready to accept a spirit guide mentor. So your first spirit guide comes to you when you're about six months old. This first spirit guide will either be male or female, it doesn't matter, but what they will be is extremely caring and very maternal. If you're one of an identical twin, you will have the same spirit guide as your identical twin, just for the first months, years maybe, but not, I mean, not hugely long. When you start developing your own individuality as much as you can, because babies who are twins tend to be very much together, don't they, until they separate off slowly throughout their lives. And even then they have a hugely strong connection. So if you are a twin, you have the same spirit guide that you share with your sibling. These spirit guides typically remain with each child until around the age of seven. You know, some people it will be slightly later, some people it will be slightly earlier. It very much depends on the person. In, on, in rare occasions, you will remain with the spirit guide that you had from a baby right up to the point where you die. Which is rather beautiful actually that people can continue such a long relationship and so happily. So around the age of seven, you lose your spirit guide that you've had since a baby and you gain your spirit guide that will probably remain with you for the rest of your life. Now there's a few rules to these spirit guides, but they, these are all breakable, these rules. But in general, the spirit guide will be the opposite of your sex. If you are male, it will most likely be female. If you're female, it will most likely be female. If you are a male who identifies as a female, you might well then have a male spirit guide. What is all this about is it is balancing out the male and female energies in every human and it's the yin and the yang. So if you're a female, you need a male perspective helping and guiding you. Those interests that the spirit guide has at heart are your best interests. They are there for you and primarily you and only you. It is at the end of your teenage years and coming out into sort of being a young adult this is when you probably, if you haven't already, understand your spirit guide a bit more and develop your tastes, which will be akin to your spirit guide. I'll give you an example of this. So my spirit guide when I was 18 was a Japanese gentleman. He's quite old and I used to know him as Sensei. He lived in Japan in about the 1890s and was a quite an eminent Japanese sort of businessman. And I adored him. He was, he was a fascinating chap. But until I knew about him, until I sort of got to grips with who my spirit guide was, I had a very deep love of the Japanese culture. So I bought a male Japanese summer kimono, which I then used as a dressing gown. The first time I went to a Japanese restaurant, I thought 
that it was the most magnificent Japanese food I'd ever eaten, ever. It was delicious. And actually, I still do. I love, I love a bit of sushi. Love sushi, love sake, love Japanese food. But that was because my guide was Japanese and because I worked so closely with him and therefore he instilled in me this love for all things Japanese. So a spirit guide will um, be your mentor and they have your best interests at heart and they'll want to bring you to understanding the world of spirit and the world of humans, the physical world, because these are so interconnected. And that's part of them is to try and open our minds to the possibility that there might be law to life than the floor underneath our feet. The spirit guides are constantly at your beck and call. That doesn't mean to say that they are in the room standing beside you at every point of light and day. They aren't. However, if I was to reach out and ask my spirit guide to join me here, they would come pretty much immediately within 10 minutes. They're there for you. One of the lessons I want you to learn today is how to contact your spirit guide. Now this is advanced witchcraft. We're going to have to draw a circle, we're going to have to do some aura work, open our third eye. So I'm going to put my circle casting video up here, followed by the third eye opening video up here. Check out both of those. This is advanced witchcraft, working towards understanding the realm of spirit, which is part of all of our paths. We came from the world of spirit and we're going to go back to the world of spirit. Spirit guides cannot read your mind. I've got an example of this story is that um, one of my children was very, very ill a few years ago, luckily has recovered. And when we found out about it, I remember being very, very cross with my child's spirit guide who I had actually known in this life um, and he died of several years before she was born and came back to be my daughter's spirit guide. But I spoke to him and I said, why didn't you tell me that this was going on? Why didn't you? And he turned around to me and he said, because I didn't know. Spirit guides do not have every single knowledge about your innermost thoughts. They don't and they can't. So therefore you have to communicate with them. And the best way to do that and the clearest way to do that is to speak out loud. But first of all, we've got to learn how to get them here. And what I want to show you is how we can do that. So the very first thing we need to do in order to contact our spirit guide is to cast a circle. Now because this is advanced witchcraft, we're going to cast a very specific circle. So I need you to know how to do so. The reason we cast a circle is because when you are putting yourself out into the psychic world, you become slightly vulnerable and you can be attacked and the circle will give you a measure of protection. Secondly, it will also increase and upgrade your power level. So it helps you reach that psychic world. I'm going to cast a circle with a wand and some candles. I've marked my north, south, east and west points with candles because this makes a more powerful circle because you're calling in the corners. And I'm going to cast it with a very specific spell. Start at the north and say, I cast this circle. Let all that happens within it be for the greatest and highest good of those concerned. Right. So that is how I have cast my circle. The second thing is that I need some help when talking to a spirit guide. Well, I don't need any help, but you might. So I've got with me a playing card pack or a tarot deck and a pendulum. It depends on how you communicate. So the second thing we need to do is to open up our vibrational energy and our aura so that we're allowing people to come to us. And the way to do that is to feel your aura, which is here around this area. And I want you to imagine it going flop and sort of oh, releasing it so that it, instead of being a nice tight shield around you, it's a bit fuzzy at the edges, a bit like a cloud, not a defined space around your body. It's much more fluid. So sit in your circle, open your third eye, watch my third eye video, putting it up here. And then imagine your aura releasing it into a fluffy cloud. 
No. Right, your body. And then if you feel your aura, like I'm doing here, yeah, see, it's really spongy now. Yeah, I can feel it all of it. Yeah, instead of feeling a barrier type aura, I'm feeling a mm, much more fluffy cloud type of aura. Once you are in a circle with your aura released, now is the time to call on your spirit guide. So you say, my spirit guide, I ask that you join me here within this room so that we can discuss and connect. Or words to that effect, it doesn't have to be exactly that either. You're just asking them to turn up. Now your spirit guide will hear you. I absolutely promise you, they will know you're there. But it might take them a little time because, you know, they're quite busy up in the world of spirit. You know, they've got things to do. Might take them a little bit of time to come. So I always give them five, ten minutes before I then check. And the way I check is that I normally feel. However, you might not have that ability yet. So you might need to use a pendulum and ask a yes or no question. I mean, I haven't asked anyone here, but actually I think there is actually somebody in the room with me at the moment. So I'm just going to ask. Yeah, is there a spirit here with me? Hmm. Is it Lena? Yes, Lena is the spirit that has been advising me on how to make a spirit guide video. So she's good. Yeah, thanks, Lena. Cool. Once they have turned up, or if you don't know, five to ten minutes have passed, then imagine in your mind what they might look like. Now, bear in mind that if you're a girl, your spirit guide is most likely a boy. 99.9% of the time, it's going to be a male counterpart for you, or a female counterpart. So imagine what sort of male you might like as your spirit guide. What do they look like? What do you think they might look like? Are they old? Are they middle-aged? Are they young? Are they a teenager? It is whatever resonates with you, and only you will know that, because by connecting that what I would like my spirit guide to be, you, I promise you, will be told and you will know that that is how your spirit guide is. Pay attention at the same time to your feelings. Do you have an overwhelming feeling of love and comfort? Do you feel slightly bewildered? I remember when I first spoke, my very first psychic speaking with my spirit guide, and I was completely and utterly bewildered because I was like, what? What? Is this happening? I couldn't quite take it in. Now, I am no natural medium. I have had to work at this and I have practiced on a daily basis and still do, so to speak. However, now I'm much better. You know, I can speak with all sorts of spirits and I can, you know, communicate with pretty much all sorts of entities, actually. With it. But I'm not a natural medium. I did have to learn and study and work, and so you might too. If you're sitting in your circle and have let down your aura, and you have called your spirit, I promise you, your spirit will be there. Finally, I've got a small word of warning. Well, it's not really warning, it's sort of beware. Look out for this. If this is the first time you cast a circle, let down your aura, and ask spirit to join you, you definitely will get your spirit guide to come on and he might only say, he or she might only want to say, hi, and that's it. They just want to say, hello, I'm your spirit guide. Nice to finally talk to you. Then you might have a long lost loved relative or friend or possibly even an animal sometimes come and say hello too. Now, it's very difficult if you haven't done this before to distinguish between two different spirits. So you must trust your feelings and your instinct. Is this my spirit guide here or am I getting a different vibe and do I think it's somebody else? Now, I would suggest that you only ask your spirit guide to come and you say out loud to other spirits, I will talk to you, but today and at this time, these could only my spirit guide be because it can be a bit confusing first time I talked to my spirit guide he came and said hello and then about 15 people turned up and the person who was doing it with me was completely nonplussed as I was actually at the time so you know you've got to be fairly aware 
that is how you contact your spirit guides. Now, you may well have more than the two normal amounts of spirit guides throughout your life, you know, your childhood one and your rest of life one. I, for example, am actually on my eighth spirit guide. He's called Frathia, which is a Greek name, written in Greek, um, and we are learning together. So I'm on my eighth spirit guide. Now, the reason why I have got so through so many spirit guides is because they have taught me all that I needed to know. And so therefore, when the lessons, you know, were finished, I moved on to my next teacher. I am distinctly unusual in the fact that I'm on my eighth. Most people have two. Some people only have one. It is unusual to have more than two. So I'm very interested to know if you manage to contact your spirit guide, if you've already contacted your spirit guide. Do you have a name? What are they? Tell me about them. Leave me a comment below. I'd really like to hear your story. In the meantime, don't forget our cover meetings coming up for April. Is that April the 8th? And for all the details, go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherell. And you'll find all the details there. Do have a look because we have a lot of fun. Our last cover meeting I found rather spooky because something happened that I didn't expect, which I do enjoy. Bit of, ooh, didn't expect that to happen. Hopefully see you there. And in the meantime, do give me a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you next week.